Hello and welcome, Pokemon fans. There are those who call me Bard Breaker, and it's time for another Pokemon Challenge run. Since it was just Valentine's Day yesterday, let's do something special this week and ask and answer the question, can I beat Pokemon Soul Silver with only a love disc? Get it? Because it's Valentine's Day and this is a heart-shaped Pokemon? A little too on the nose? Yeah, I thought so too. Oh well, we're gonna do it, so here we go. So Love Disc is this dinky little heart-shaped fish from Generation 3, and while you might think it should be called the Love Pokemon, nope, it's the Rendezvous Pokemon. Might as well have called it the Grinder Pokemon at that rate. In any case, it's a pure water type with a stat total of 330, which puts it on par with Pokemon like Voltorb, Fanpy, and even Spoink. We're very fast, which is very nice, but aside from that, we're not what you'd expect from a fish. We're weak, wet, and floppy. Well, actually, I take that back. We are what we would expect from a fish, then. At least most of our water and ice moves are special and not physical, but the stats still suck either way. Saying of moves, by level up, we don't have a lot to work with here. We get a lot of status moves with not a lot of damage options. At least we get Water Gun early, so we'll have a same type attack bonus move for pretty much the entire run. Some Pokemon don't even get the luxury of a same type attack bonus move ever. We also learn Takedown for some reason, but that'll be it until Water Pulse a bit later. Aqua Ring when we get it will be nice because it's basically leftovers as a move. By TM we get little to no type coverage. We do get access to Ice Beam and Blizzard which are going to be ice to see. But beyond those, unless we get a decent type from our hidden power, we just have the standard assortment of moves everything else can learn. So at this point, it's time to make your predictions for how well we'll do. Remember, I write my script as I go, so I haven't started playing the run yet. Take your guesses down below to please the almighty algorithm, god of the YouTube algorithm, and let me know if you think I can do this or not. I'm gonna say we can, that's generally the case if we're being honest, but we may have to use some cheeky plays like Attract in order to do so. In any event, let's take a final look at the rules before we get started. In battle, I can only use Love Disc. I'll need other utility Pokemon for stuff like HMs, but I won't be allowed to use those Pokemon in battle. I also will not be using any items in battle, though the use of held items and items outside of battle will be allowed. And as always, our usual boilerplate closer, I won't be using any cheats, glitches, or exploits, aside from replacing our starter with Love Disc. So let's do it. So to start off, since this is Valentine's Day, I try to find some love with the pervert in the bushes staring through the window. Unfortunately for us, we get rejected right away. So I guess we'll just go get our Pokemon then. I've used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Totodile with Love Disc so we can do the entire run with it. This will allow our rival to keep Chikorita, which will give us the hardest type to face off against for the duration of the run. It's female, as most Love Disc are, so I go ahead and name her Anne. This is after the lead singer of the band Heart, Anne Wilson. We're modest in nature, so that means more special attack at the expense of attack. Since our attack stat is so low anyway, and our special attack is what we're primarily going to be making the most use of, I'm okay with this nature absolutely. Our ability is Swift Swim. This will boost our speed in the rain. Not like we aren't already fast, but I guess I'll take it. In any case, our first task, in a universe that has matter teleportation technology, is to go pick up and deliver an egg for Professor Tree. But because we have to, we go pick it up from Mr. Totally Not Obsessed with Pokemon and start back to Professor Tree. Along the way, we're accosted by our soon-to-be rival, the pervert from the bushes earlier, who rejected our advances. He still doesn't love us and instead chooses to fight us with his Chikorita. I go ahead and use Charm to chunk its attack, since at this point it only has physical normal attacks at this point. It doesn't get an elemental attack yet thanks to its level. In return, it chunks our attack back with Growl. Thanks to that, we actually start doing more damage with Water Gun, despite the fact we're watering a plant. So after some watery fun, we secure our victory against the rival Tim, and our adventure can continue. From there, we deliver the egg to Professor Tree, who pats us on the back, gives us a motivational speech, and sends us on our way. Our first real stop on this quest is Violet City, home of Faulkner and the Flying Gym. It's also home to Sprout Tower, which we actually have to clear out before we can do the gym, so we have to go clear out the tower first anyway. And this is going to be a grand time. Watering all those plants is just what I wanted to do to start the run. So I decide to stall for time a bit and round up the usual suspects for any of our runs. First, I go and find and catch a Pidgey for Fly later, nicknaming it Flapsity the 45th, Long, Long may he fly, fly, as well as wrangling up a bell sprout for Cut later, nicknaming her Snipticus the 45th, Long, Long may she cut, and after enough stalling for time, I then decide to go clear out Sprout Tower. There's actually not a lot that's too difficult here. Much like the rival fight before, simply because we have the same type attack bonus with Water Gun, we actually don't do terribly here. Eventually, I parlay my success into a match against Faulkner, and I don't even bother healing before him. Despite the fact we're only a couple levels higher than his birds, we don't have a lot of trouble against him. It's a pretty simple feat to just hit him over and over again with Water Gun. He makes things interesting though as he brings our health down awfully low into the single digits, but I still manage to secure the win. While I see birds flying all the time in the rain in real life, I have to wonder if that would work in Pokemon based off these results. With one badge in the book, now we can proceed on to Azalea Town. Here we have our first major run-in with Team Evil. They're trying to open up a sashimi restaurant in the local well. An odd place for one, but to each their own. And we're tasked with stopping them when Kurt, the town balologist, falls and hurts his back. Once we get them out of the well though, Kurt magically heals himself and now it's time to take on Bugsy at the bug gym. And much to my actual surprise, I don't have a lot of luck here. Even when we charm the Scyther, he just swaps off to remove the debuff. I make several attempts at Bugsy, but I just don't have any success. 
I'm gonna have to level up our fish a bit more before we can beat these bugs. I thought fish ate bugs. Shouldn't this be a natural step up the food chain here? Anyway, the rival fight outside of town isn't any better yet either, so we're gonna need some levels. So I go get three levels on our fish and try again at level 25. I charm the scyther again to start out as it sets about chunking our defense with Leer. I start dousing it with water and he eventually lands a quick attack which despite the debuffs to our defense didn't actually do that much damage to us. But we still hit the obstacle of him having a berry. We're fortunately able to bring him down though thanks to a very timely critical hit. After that Metapod and Kakuna aren't much of a problem for us as they really only know tackle and with that we finally secure the second badge of the adventure. After clearing out the bug gym though we have to fight off our rival once again in order to leave town and he's really posing an obstacle for us. His Bayleaf has Synthesis, so any damage that we can do just immediately gets healed back up all the while he has an opportunity to severely hurt us with Razor Leaf. So it's either we have to grind up in power level or we have to get cheesy. I decide to get cheesy. So when Bayleaf comes out we immediately go ahead and use a Tract on him which keeps him from attacking half the time. This keeps his Syntheses at bay just long enough for us to bring them down with our takedowns. Eventually we do bring down the Bayleaf and all that's left is his Zubat which we have no issues dealing with with Water Gun. Now that we've cleared out the rival who once again rejected our advances, we can leave town and proceed through Elix Forest. Once we rescue the Wayward Farfetch'd quick enough, we then make our way into Goldenrod City where it's time for Whitney and the Normal Gym. I make a first attempt at her but Clefairy metronomes up a Leech Seed which just saps our strength something fierce and we just don't do enough damage quick enough to outpace the Leech Seed. I try a few more attempts but even with Charm we just aren't able to sustain the fight. We're gonna need to go level up a bit again. After a bit of leveling up we get to level 31 and we learn Water Pulse. This will be a great replacement for Water Gun. It's stronger and and it has a chance to cause confusion, which is excellent. We immediately return to Whitney, plain and tall, the normal gym leader, and try her again. Clefairy is out again, but wastes its only turn on this earth, mimicking a water pulse it'll never get to use before it goes down. We hit harder against Miltank, but it also hits back with a critical stomp. A milk drink later, and it's looking like we may be in for a spot of bother, but we get our own critical hit luck to bring down the Miltank and secure the next badge post-haste. Speaking of post-haste, it's a quick jaunt up to Ecruteague City from here. Our next rendezvous is with our rival Tim once again, and we're still desperately trying to get him to love us, and I don't know why he won't give us the time of day. His Ghastly is out first, and we one-shot it with Water Pulse. Next out is the Bay Leaf, and it might give us some trouble. I get a lucky confusion from our first water pulse and then some solid luck as he hits himself in confusion. A couple water pulses and takedowns later and we actually wind up never taking damage from the bay leaf as it just kept hitting itself in confusion over and over again. Eventually I overwatered the plant and from there we don't have a lot of trouble getting his magnet and his bat wet and securing another mandatory win for our journey. Following the burnt tower encounter we make a trip immediately to the ghost gym and take on Morty the town ghostologist. Unfortunately for him he doesn't stand a chance for us as we wash over his team with our water pulse without incident. Now admittedly I did lose the first attempt but that was thanks to being put to sleep twice, once by Gengar and once by Haunter. That really does just go to show how important it is to stay awake every day. And with that a word from our sponsor, Barty B Energy. One sip and you won't slip. In the slumber that is. Anyway, from there it's time to head down to Olivine City, and after a pass through the lighthouse, we get to chat with Jasmine, who's tending to a sick light bulb, and he just to go get something from the hardware store to fix it. So before we do that, I go catch up a magic harp for surf, dive, and waterfall later. Well, okay, it won't learn that on its own, but once I level it up once, it becomes a Gyarados, it will. So I nickname it Aquides the 45th, long may she swim, and then we can proceed down to Seanwood City. Once I surf down to Seanwood City, I pay a visit to Discount Sam's Light Bulb Repair and Frogurt Superstore to get what I need to heal up the lighthouse light source. And while we're here, I decide to pay a visit to Chuck at the fighting gym. But for once, I actually can't beat him on our first attempt. Or our second. Or really at all. Unfortunately, Polyrath has water absorbed, so we can't actually hit it with Surf, so we're stuck with Takedown. Even using Aqua Rain to keep us in the fight, plus a Tract, isn't cheesy enough to beat the Polyrath. Alright, it's time to level a bit, let's come back and try him again later. So I make my way back to Olivine City where I deliver the goods to Jasmine to heal up the amp for us and then she returns to the gym where we can finally face her. It's actually kind of weird that we're facing her before defeating Chuck, but this time we're rocking a solid surf under our belt. Magnemite goes down to a single one, but her second actually survives and paralyzes us with Thunder Wave. But we surf over it too and bring it down easy enough. Steelix is part ground and it does try to make things a bit interesting, but I managed to surf down her metal snake as well without a whole lot of incident and now we can proceed on the way. So before I go on the adventure to defeat Chuck again in the south, let's go north and try to defeat Price at the Ice Gym first. Well, alright, before we do that we have to go clean out Team Rocket from the local underground. There's not much to do here since, like usual, Team Rocket doesn't pose much of a challenge in any run. Riddle me this, Batman, do any of you guys actually have trouble with Team Rocket in any of your runs? I do these solo runs and I don't have hardly any trouble with them, so I can't imagine any of you with full teams do. But it is what it is, a chance to at least get a rendezvous with Lance who needs our help. Once Team Rocket is cleared out though, it's time to go clear Price out from the local refrigerator. 
And just like when you go to the refrigerator in real life and you wind up standing there with the door open looking at all the half-finished bottles of Juicy Juice and your Gogurt tubes for a lot longer than you thought you would, this battle takes a fair bit longer than I thought it would. Seal isn't much of a problem, though quite hilariously he goes for hail as I set up an aqua ring, thereby nullifying each other. A bit more back and forth it brings it down and not nice as Pile of Swine, who being part ground goes down super quick to our surf. Last out is Dugong, and this is where we really get lost staring into the fridge. Takedown doesn't do a lot, but Surf is resisted, so we aren't doing a lot either way. All I can do is chip away at this thing and try to bring it down. But this damn Seal 2.0 just keeps resting and healing itself. And when it's not healing itself, Price is healing it with full restores and hyper potions. Fortunately, he doesn't have a lot that can do much to us either, so we're just locked into a battle of attrition. Finally, after two full restores and a bunch of rests, we're running out of power points, but our Aqua Ring keeps us healthy when we do get hit, and we're finally able to bring it down when Price finally runs out of Tylenol and the damn thing finally goes down. Whew, that took a lot longer than I thought it was, and I still can't decide do I want to drink the Juicy Juice or the Gogurt. So now, before we can proceed east to the Dragon Gym, I still actually have to go back to defeat Chuck, so we surf back to Cianwood and he's still kicking our ass. Primeape is no problem, as we can one-shot it with Surf, but we can't Surf the Polyrath due to Water Absorb, so I can only use Takedown. And though we had quite a rousing battle in the first match, it becomes clear thanks to his Hyper Potions, I can't quite do this fight just yet with just Takedown. Rather than leveling up a bit, I decide to try and go ahead and use Attract again. It's a cheeky move and a bit cheesy, but we might as well use it if it gets us through the fight at this level instead of spending time to go through the grinding process again and again. After a couple attempts using the track, we secure our win and that's our seventh badge. Unfortunately for us though, we can't just proceed east into Blackthorn City. Team Rocket is back in black and we have to go take them out of Goldenrod City. We defeat the Imposter Director without an incident, and we just have to casually surf over all his coffees and wheezings without too much trouble. But along the way, we do have another fight with our rival Tim, who is still unfortunately unwilling to love us, even still. How many times must we kick his team's ass before he finally loves us? Come on. He does take a few tries, though we do have to use a tract on the Meganium. I could get lucky and land a crit, but if we're going to rely on luck, we might as well use a tract to get us through it. After that, it's an easy sweep of surf, though he certainly makes things interesting by poisoning us. And that brings us all the way down to the wire with 2 HP, but finally we end the fight, just barely dragging ourselves over the finish line. Speaking of the finish line, the Team Rocket finish line is rather uneventful, as Surf just carries us past the big bad boss who goes limping back home to Mommy and leaves Goldenrod City much better off than when they found it. We can now proceed east to Blackthorn City to the 8th and final gym. So next on the map is the Ice Path. We have to move some rocks which require strength to do so, so we go ahead and pick up a Swine Up for Strength, nickname it by Septicus the 45th, Long Long she Lift, and proceed through the cold cold cave to make our way to Blackthorn. Once we get to Blackthorn, we go straight for the Dragon Gym, and even with the choice specs boosting our surf by 20%, I can't do much here. We make it to her Kingdra once, but we just don't do enough damage quick enough, and we're gonna have to level here. I really don't see a way around it. We can't use Attract. So let's go do that for a bit and come back. So like usual in these Gen 4 runs, it's back to my favorite grinding spot, which is here south of the Safari Zone in this patch of grass. The Pokemon here have a decent-ish level for a decent-ish experience, and it's right near a Pokemon Center for quick heals and PowerPoint replenishment. We do have to spend a lot of time here. I try Claire over and over again every few levels and I don't have any success, so I just have to keep grinding and grinding. Finally, I go pick up the TM for return from the department store since it's finally Sunday, which will be better than takedown, but we're still gonna need to level more to deal with the dragons. I also checked our hidden power type by the way, and it's fire, so that's not gonna be helpful at all. Finally, after ages of grinding, and yes, I did try Claire every few levels, I finally go at level 80 back to Claire, this time with return in our arsenal. I've also equipped a Cherry Berry to deal with the Thunder Wave paralysis from her Dragonairs. Even at level 80, this still takes quite a few tries though. Water gets resisted by her entire team, so our Surf is only doing half damage, but we're able to pretty much two-shot the Dragonairs at this point, and our Berry does take care of the first paralysis. Even still, we do wind up paralyzed a second time. Though there's really not a lot to say about the fight, we only have two options for moves, and it just boils down to overpowering her team. Aqua Ring will keep us in the fight, but just barely, and we finally bring down her final Kingdra with just a handful of HP remaining. We couldn't have really cut that any closer if we tried, but I'll take it, a win's a win. Given our high level, the next step of the ladder up to success is to defeat the Kimono Girls, which given the fact that we have Stab, Surf, and a lot of extra levels, we have no trouble defeating them without issue. Though I did have to swap to return to deal with the Vaporeon. Now we get to go to the World Islands and get ourselves an encounter with the box Legendary Lugia. We need to catch ourselves a Flash user, so I stop and catch a Magnemite, nicknaming it Flashelius the 45th, Long May They Shine, and I head south. Dealing with Lugia proves to be an easy sweep with Surf without incident, and now we could finally move on to the Elite Four and draw this run to a close. One last stop on the way of our journey to the Elite Four, though, is our rival Tim once again. It's our last chance at a life of love, but he still just doesn't go for it. No matter how appealing an offer we make to him, he just keeps insisting on fighting us. Ah uh, well, when in Rome, so I just decide to start surfing his entire team down. His Meganium does try to make things interesting, but thanks to Return, we quickly dispatch him and win the fight. And with that, now it's time for the Elite Four. 
Psychic Trainer Will is out first, and honestly, the hardest member of his team is the Slowbro, simply because it can tank our return so well and it's resistant to surf, but even that one doesn't pose much of a problem. It really does just boil down to us having all these extra levels, which while kind of anticlimactic here at the end, was necessary to even get to this point, so it is what it is. A quick victory over Will leads us to the next member of the Elite Four, Koga, and he's even less of a challenge than Will was. Who would have ever thought that bugs couldn't swim? I guess Koga really should have invested in some water striders and water soluble poison if he wanted to stand a chance at defeating our little heart shaped love fish. Up next is the Fighting Master Bruno, and he actually does stop us in our tracks. We wind up paralyzed and defeated by the Machamp. How dare, sir, how dare. How could you look at this cute little fish and decide to punch it? Well, that tears it. Let's show him what true power is all about by equipping the choice specs and surfing over his entire team. And yep, sure enough, each and every one of his Pokemon prove that they can't swim and are easily vanquished by a surfing heart. And though we've been moving right along, last in our way is Karen, and she wants to speak to the manager. We wind up confused, hitting ourselves, and paralyzed, and because of the choice specs, we can't swap off Surf. Alright then, um, hmm, oh dear, we may be in for a spot of bother then. Or at least we would be, but on our next attempt, things go a whole heck of a lot more smoothly. We don't get confused, she doesn't swap in the Vile Plume and paralyze us, and we just surf the rest of her entire team down. It really is remarkable how difficult one pass through can be, but the second attempt can go in a completely opposite direction thanks to the AI decision making. Though, speaking of stopping us in our tracks, Lance is a tricky pickle indeed. We just can't seem to make a lot of headway against him. I swap off the choice specs for a Cherry Berry to deal with a Thunder Wave paralysis again, but even after using the three rare candy we have, we just don't make a lot of headway. Aqua Ring is nice and it keeps us going, but it's a rough patch to say the least. Looking at the moveset, I decided to go back to Goldenrod City and get the TM for Blizzard at this point. I'd like Ice Beam, but that requires playing Voltorb Flip and you all are well aware of my disdain for that horse shit. So we go by the TM for Blizzard and easily surf our way back through the Elite Four to get back to Lance. We still set up an Aqua Ring on the Gyarados for safety and then set about bringing down his team. His Gyarados goes down quickly enough and we do wind up paralyzed, though cured thanks to our berry, thanks to a Blizzard miss. Fortunately though, we seem to only miss Blizzard once as we make both quick work of his other Dragonites and Aerodactyl, which is part rock, and Charizard being part fire, are both easy sweeps with Surf. And almost as quickly as this fight began, we defeat Lance to secure the win. Well, that was an awesome change with one extra move. But that's it folks, we've beaten Soul Silver with just a love disc. I know the Elite Four was kind of anticlimactic there at the end, just surfing over everything without too much incident. And that really is one of the problems of overleveling, but those levels became necessary when dealing with Claire and the Dragon Gym. Or at least they were at the time because I actually forgot I could go buy Blizzard. I could have also gotten Ice Beam earlier, but again, I really, really despise Voltorb Flip. Just let me sell my useless items for coins like a good game. Don't make me play that. Oh well, a win's a win though. Now normally yes, these Johto runs do continue with the post-game region of Kanto, but I'm honestly going to call this one here. It's Valentine's Day, or at least it is when I'm writing, recording, and editing this, and since the run is done, I've managed to get the day off work somehow, and my fiancé is busy trying to pull me off the computer, it's time to wrap this one up for the week. So thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next week we should be back with another team run instead of a solo challenge, complete with a shiny encounter, so stay tuned for that. And until next time guys, like, comment, subscribe, go join the Bardbreaker Discord server if you're looking to hang out with me and the audience, and until next time, go catch them all.